Happy Sunday, everybody. We're going to tell you the who, what, when, where, and why of repositioning cruises. Stay tuned. We're Chris and Steve, an early retired couple who sold everything to travel the world full time. We share our nomad life, hikes, and vegan eats. Grab our book, Two Carry-Ons and a Plan, on Amazon and follow us on social. Subscribe to catch our video every Sunday. So where are we? We are in the beautiful city of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We arrived here a few days ago and really excited to tell you about our repositioning cruise that we just went on and uh, give you all the, all the details of the advantages and the benefits of repositioning cruises. And so why don't we just you know, kick it off, Chris, and tell us what, what's a repositioning cruise and why would you do it? And by the way, if you're new here, this is Steve. He's got a new baby face. He's <laughs> lost 10 years by shaving off his beard. And I'm Chris, and we are with Eat, Walk, Learn, our company that we produce these videos under. So welcome. Repositioning cruises. So Steve and I discovered repositioning cruises about a couple years ago when we were trying to figure out how to get from Europe to Mexico. And what we discovered in the cruise industry, they have these things called repositioning cruises. Repositioning cruises are one-way cruises that move a ship from one market to the next market. What do we mean about markets? What are some of the markets that are out there? Well, I mean, a lot of people think about for in the U.S. and they think about the Caribbean, right? Going, leaving from Fort Lauderdale and going on a you know a five-day cruise around the Caribbean or to Mexico and back. Uh, but there's also the you know the cruises to Alaska. Um, there are cruises, cruises to Mexico. Cruises to Mexico. There's cruises around the Mediterranean. Uh, typically, those like the Alaska and the Mediterranean, those are going to be in the summertime. And so the cruises, uh, the cruise companies want to move their ships to where the markets are. So right. in the winter time, they want to be in places like Australia and uh, in the Red Sea and in Mexico. So they take advantage of them having to move their boats from one position to another. Right. So for example, your boats that are finishing up the Mediterranean season will then move over to Florida for the Bahamas season, or your boats that were in the South America for the South America season will move the ships up to Alaska, or sit from Australia to uh, the Indian Ocean, or from uh, Europe to the Red Sea. So these all over, you'll see a map here of the different cruises and the different transition places and how these boats move around the world throughout the seasons. Now, fortunately, they generally move, generally, in April and May and October and November. So that, that's repositioning cruise season. And um, that's also usually the shoulder season in those tourist destinations. So if you're a traveler who looks to travel during the shoulder season when things seem to be a little bit more affordable, repositioning cruises are a great way to take advantage of those shoulder seasons. So we, the reason why we, when Steve's gonna tell you, the reason why we like repositioning cruises is because it really fits into our strategy. By the way, I'm gonna give you a video up here of how we use repositioning cruises in our strategy as nomads. But what are some of the benefits of using repositioning cruise? Well, the, the biggest benefit is it gets you to where you want to go. And what's included is your hotel stay, your transportation, all your food, all your entertainment. It's like a like a, a all-inclusive resort that gets you from one place to another. So, it's, so everything is, in, is included. And you go to, to some really incredible ports, I think, as well, that you don't usually go to on cruises. For example, we went to the Azores and we went to the Canary Islands. Um, and we'll tell you a little bit about our most recent uh, repositioning cruises. But I would really never have thought that I would be going to the Azores. Right, and by the way, if you like us, and you like Steve, if you like Steve's new, new faceless beard, or beardless face, subscribe and give us a like. Um, so one of the things that we really like about, about repositioning cruises is, you know, we have a $4,000 a month budget. I'm going to put another link up here for what our annual budget is. And cruising fits right into our budget because it puts together all of our daily expenses and we get transit out of it. So we don't have to fly someplace. We don't end up with jet lag and we get our housing and everything else joined in for about the price of what a flight would be. So yeah. it really makes sense for us. And typically a repositioning cruise, because the boat, they're trying to get the boat from one place to another. I think it's a ship. A ship, a ship. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's not a boat. Um, they're typically lower priced cruises. Uh, because uh, um, 
because they're kind of shoulder season and they're not that, that popular, they're kind of weird, they're, the ships are usually about half full, at least in our experience. And uh, you know, when you have a ship that's half full, it means the service is gonna be better uh, because they can, they're paying attention to you more, the, it's less crowded on the ship, the pools aren't, aren't crowded, the theater is not crowded. So it's really nice to be on a, on a cruise when you have a half empty boat. And you still get 100% of the services. So yeah. nothing's cut, all the entertainment and the food and everything is still there. You just have a 4,000 person boat with 1,800 people on it. So that's a ship, a 4,000 person ship with 1,800 people on it. So that's really a nice way to enjoy a cruise. Now, we also find that the people that do repositioning cruises are often different than the people that are doing those circular seasonal cruises. These, a lot of people that we meet on the repositioning cruises are people like us, or there's some sort of full-time travel, or they're retired, or they have a way that they can enjoy a 14 or 21 day cruise versus that five or six or seven day cruise that a lot of things like the Bahamas and the Med and so on. Yeah, typically right. you're gonna have less, less kids, less families, it's gonna be more, um, I think seasoned travelers are gonna be on these types of cruises. Right, right. And I think that's a benefit as well. So uh, we're gonna give you an example of, we've been on, Steve and I have been on three repositioning cruises together. I've done an additional one without him. And the last one we did, uh, people may not think of this as a repositioning cruise, because it's not obvious. A lot of us think of you know Europe to, to the Americas or Americas back to Europe. This one was from the Med to the Red Sea through the Suez Canal. Now we do want to make a, just a, a, a minor point of the difference between a repositioning cruise and a world cruise. The world cruises are also one-way cruises, but world cruises are really targeted towards people that are wanting to stay a long time on the boat or on the ship. They are maybe on a 45-day you know, going around the world sort of thing, and they're often targeted towards the luxury, luxury traveler. That's different than a repositioning cruise. So our repositioning cruise, some might think was a world travel, but it was actually, we got on in Genoa, Italy, then went to Rome, and then to uh, Olympia, Greece. Olympia. Um, where, wasn't that great to see where Olympia the- Olympia uh, was the, such a cool place. Yeah, we got to see the, where the ancient Olympic games were, and where the torch and where is they lit. The torch yeah, it's and the lit. Modern games. Yeah. Oh, by the way, in in uh, Rome, we went on. We had been to Rome before. This is one of the advantages of repositioning. You get to go back to some places and do some different things. Like this time in Rome, we went on an e-bike tour along the Appian Way, and anyway, and then we went to uh, Herculea, also in Crete, where we had been, and Heraclea. Uh, Heraclea. Yes. <laughs> Ugh. How do you think I beat that record? Right we, we only lived on Crete for you know for six weeks. You think we, we got know it right? How but to pronounce the word anyway. And went to got to the chance to go to the ancient museum there, which we hadn't been to. And the then um, we went, so it was so fun to go on the Suez Canal. That was, that was a dream of yours, wasn't it? To go to the Suez Canal. Yeah, it was it was really great. Uh, interesting is how they they position all the boats in the Mediterranean, and you don't actually start going through the Suez Canal until the morning time. You're only, the boats only travel during the daylight hours. So, and it's one-way traffic, but there's an in-between part where there's two canals so that they, they, you pass the other, the other ships. Uh, but anyways, you, you, as you come down through, you've got on the right of the ship is all green and lush because you're in the, the Nile Valley. And then on the left is the uh, Sinai Peninsula, mm -hmm. which is all desert. And just really fascinating to see and the all, different... And all Egypt. So you have green yeah. Egypt on, on one side and, and brown Egypt <laughs> on the other side. It's really interesting ge uh, ge geologically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but just to have all of the ships uh, in a row, you know, coming down uh, through the canal. And These it's, giant it's a... container ships that are like skyscrapers tall and the little tiny tight boats and then people in their, their fishing boats, you know, rowing next to these giant ships, just doing their daily activity of fishing. It was just, it yeah. was so amazing. It was wider than I thought and longer because it took most of the day to right. get through the canal. So it really was just, we just sat up on the top deck and just, you know, watched it go by yeah. and just really had a, had a great time. I think we had a little champagne maybe as we were floating through <laughs> the Suez Canal. We're celebrating uh, two new uh, continents, Egypt and Asia. Egypt and Asia, yeah. two new continents for yeah. us. That's and right. countries too. So then uh, we got through the Suez Canal and got into the Red Sea. And in the Red Sea, we got to go to Jordan and stopped at the port called Aqaba and then took a, a, a tour up to Petra. Now, talk about another dream dream destination. Yeah. You uh, loved I it. I would think, I mean, uh, you know, Petra is 
always on the top 10 list of places to see, you know, like bucket list kind of items. And it's a, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it's just, it's just an incredible place. You know, we're showing you pictures here and just the pictures don't even do it justice. It's really uh, amazing. And it's in, in Jordan, again, who thinks of, I'm gonna take a cruise to Jordan. Right. Uh, it's just, right. it's just, it was just crazy. And then we ended up in Saudi. And interestingly, we were on MSC and it was the first time that they had done this cruise and entered that, that Red Sea market. So um, kind of some interesting experiences happened on NSC, MSC, which we'll talk on another video. But a really great time to arrive in Saudi. And then a, whole, a lot of people that were on the ship were on their way to do their Hajj into Medina and Mecca. Mm -hmm. And so a whole different population was on the ship than we would normally have. Usually we're on ships that have a European or American population. So it was nice to have that Asian and um, a Muslim yeah. um, population. There on. were not that many uh, English speakers. We were definitely in the minority. I think they were maybe, 10 people from the United States. Right, right, were, right. Yeah, on the Red Sea portion yeah. of the, yeah. And it was fascinating, absolutely fascinating to really enjoy different cultures and different conversations and different accents and languages and right. dress and behavior and all kinds of things. So really fascinating, much different than any other cruise we had been on. Anyway, if you are really interested in repositioning cruises, we're gonna tell you how to find them and book them. So repositioning cruises, if you go to most of the cruise websites, so you can go to Princess and Holland and you know, all the cruise sites, they may or may not have repositioning as a category to search on. So the one website that we really like for finding repositioning cruises is vacationstogo.com. I'll put a link in the, dis the description. They actually, when you go and search, you can search, they have a really, really good search, search engine that you can say what cities you want to go to, and what ports and what dates and what seasons and so on. And they also have repositioning as a category. So you can go and search on repositioning cruises and you can see that most of them are going to be in April and May and October and November. And you can look at those and maybe plan your nomading or your traveling around taking one of the repositioning cruises. Now, we also use the travel agent there, Dean Bloom. Tell him, you, tell him you, we sent you. And uh, he's great because he specializes in repositioning cruises and he's been real helpful for us. Now, you, where you actually book your cruise, you know, that's up to you. A lot of people wanna book directly from the cruise line. That's fine. We like to book at Vacations to Go because um, they often will give us a premium on top of whatever the cruise line is gonna give us. Usually that comes back in onboard credits and Vacation to Go really seems to be able to top whatever deal the cruise line is offering in order for you to book through Vacations to Go. So it's up to you. We really enjoy, uh, we've, the Vacations to Go has been great with us and we've had a good time using them. Your mileage may vary. Um, anyway, again, if you like Steve's pretty new face, give us a subscribe and a like. If you like my new hair cut, yeah. my new cruise haircut, also subscribe and give us a like and give us a comment. Where are you thinking about doing your repositioning cruise or what questions do you have that maybe we can help you sort through your decisions on that? We love you guys. We're glad you're here. Next week, you'll see us from Kuala Lumpur. There's a lot happening. We're going to get into some medical tourism coming up. Talk to you soon.